next we will dis discuss on scan architectures now as i have said that in a uh, sequential circuit to test for the sake of uh, testing it we convert it into scan circuit now there may be choice in the sense that we may decide that all the flip flops will be converted to scan flip flops or another option may be that uh, only a subset of the flip flops are converted into scan flip flop and also in the access pattern by which we can access those individual flip flops so in a full scan design almost or almost all storage elements are converted into scan cells and then combinational atpg is used for test generation so here all the flip flops that are there in the design so they are converted to scan flip flops so now for the test generation purpose since we can control uh, those flip flops externally so i can have a pure combinational test pattern generator to uh, generate tests for the combinational part and these flip flops can be tested beforehand by applying some shifting pattern through this flip flop uh, to this flip flop chain by maybe uh, all zero all one alternate zero one like that we can apply a few flush patterns and get the confidence that the chain is working fine other possibility is that only a subset of storage elements are converted to scan cell and then uh, all flip flops are not converted there may be logic behind this because as soon as we convert a flip flop into scan flip flop so um, in most of the cases some multiplexer get introduced as a result the delay uh, of the design may go up so there may be some flip flops which are critical so we cannot convert them into scan flip flop so they uh, they uh, continue to remain as normal flip flop so what happens as a result is that we get a partial scan design so in partial scan a subset of flip flops are converted into scan so naturally now we have to use a sequential atpg so because now the circuit still remains a sequential circuit so a sequential test pattern generator has to be used for uh, generating the test sequence now once we have converted uh, the um, flip flops into scan flip flops the connection pattern between them so they can define the access pattern so if all the flip flops are put on a chain then the way to access uh, these flip flops is through a serial mechanism so it is a serial scan chain so on the other hand uh, there may be uh, these uh, scan flip flops may be organized in a two dimensional way and then i can uh, address these individual flip flops by means its row address and column address giving a random access uh, scan architecture so in the successive slide so we'll be looking into these architectures in full scan design all storage elements are replaced with scan cells so what happens in the design is that if i have uh, got in the design a, a number of primary inputs number of primary inputs and a uh, number of flip flops are there so what happens is that these flip flops are converted into a scan chain they are converted into scan chain from the outside through the scan in line we can um, input the um, we can input the um, pattern into these flip flops and there is a scan out pin there is a scan out pin by which the content of these flip flops can be checked and this is these are the primary output lines so oh, what happens is that uh, for the testing purpose so i can consider these primary inputs as well as these flip flops as primary input so all the all, all of them can be configured uh, can be viewed as uh, primary input that's why all inputs can be controlled and at the same time all outputs can also be observed because they uh, the primary outputs are observable and these uh, scan cells are also observable through scan out point so advantage is uh, it converts a sequential atpg to combinational atpg so this test pattern generation problem becomes simpler so it is no more a sequential atpg then there is almost full scan design in which a small percentage of storage elements are not replaced with scan cells so this is for performance reasons because as i have already said that some of these storage elements may be on the critical path of the design so if we uh, put them on the uh, if we modify to scan cell then the delay may be a problem so uh, another issue may be the flip flops location so if it, if it is uh, located uh, haphazardly through in, in the it is far away from so if some flip flop is far away from other flip flops then when doing the scan stitching and making the scan cell then i have to have a long wire uh, running from this cluster to that uh, isolated uh, flip flop 
to put it onto a chain. So, that also sometimes uh, may be undesirable. So, that is the reason. And uh, so, also the clock distribution is another issue like storage elements driven by a small clock domain that are deemed too insignificant to be worth the additional scan insertion effort. So, if the clock domain is very small, so uh, what happens is that in, in any VLSI design, if this is the full chip, so it is divided into some regions. So, each region may be guided, uh, it may have its own supply voltage V and the frequency of operation F. So, say this region is uh, running at frequency F 1, this is at F 2, this is at F 3. So, in some sense I can say that the clock for this region, clock for this region and clock for this region, they are different. Now, if we see that in F 2, there is only very insignificant portion of the circuit that is uh, put there in F 2 then it may be better that we do not uh, consider it at uh, consider it for scan design. The reason being that uh, uh, that may be doing some very insignificant part of the job. So, uh, um, for the testing purpose, so we may omit that part. So, as a result there is no necessity to uh, put it onto the scan chain that will unnecessarily lengthen the scan chain and uh, create other problems. So, sequential circuit. So, suppose this is a sequential circuit. So, where we have got three flip flops F F 1, F F 2 and F F 3 and then we have got this combinational logic. Similarly, so these are X 1, X 2, X 3 are primary input Y 1, Y 2 are the uh, primary output. Now, what happens is that in a masked full scan design, these flip flops 1, 2 and 3, they will be replaced by three masked D scan flip flops S F F 1, S F F 2 and S F F 3. So, this is the uh, representation. So, you see that so design of this uh, scan flip flops we have seen beforehand. Now, as far as this combinational logic is concerned, so it has got x 1, x 2, x 3 as input plus these uh, flip flops are flip flop uh, outputs are coming as input that is a pseudo primary input. Similarly, it is generating this uh, primary output and pseudo primary output. Now, since these uh, scan flip flops are put on a chain, so I can control these values that are coming into these individual flip flops and that way I can control the value that should go to PPI. So, whatever uh, for testing this combinational logic for a particular fault, we need some specific bit pattern in x 1, x 2, x 3 and some uh, bit pattern in PPI, PPI lines. So, those can be done because through this scan chain I can shift appropriate pattern onto these uh, flip flops. As a result, uh, this combinational logic uh, testing uh, will can be facilitated. So, I do not need to uh, I do not need to bother about how to initialize these flip flops to the patterns needed at the PPI input. Similarly, for the uh, if this combinational logic test pattern that we apply, so it reflects the faulty uh, output at y 1, then it is fine. So, we directly observe it. It may so happen that the um, uh, faulty output comes in one of these PPOs. So, if it comes in one of those PPOs, then in the next uh, uh, cycle when the shift uh, the when this is this is captured onto this scan chain, then in the next uh, shift next few shift, shift cycles. So, this content of these uh, scan cells will be shifted out to SO. So, naturally that PPO is also become observable. So, that way the ATPG for this uh, combinational logic uh, becomes simpler by introducing this scan chain. So, primary inputs, so these are the external inputs to the circuit can be set to any required logic. Okay, so, that is because they are primary input and say they are set directly in parallel from the external inputs. So, in this case uh, these lines x 1, x 2, x 3, so they are fed parallelly from the external world. Now, then there are pseudo primary inputs. So, these are these are the scan cell outputs and it can be set to any required logic values by, by doing this scan shifting and they are, but this has to be done serially unlike uh, this uh, parallel input unlike this parallel in primary input x 1, x 2, x 3. So, this uh, so PPI setting has to be done via serial shifting. So, that time is necessary. Similarly, primary output. So, these are external outputs of the circuit they can be observed very easily and they can observe directly in the uh, directly in parallel from the external outputs. So, uh, th all these uh, outputs are uh, anything that is reflected on PO, B, uh, PO line. So, they are seen directly. On the other hand, there are pseudo primary outputs. So, these are uh, the uh, they are available at the scan cell inputs 
and they can be observed, but of course, observed th uh, through serial shifting of scan outputs. So, how do, how do, how do we apply this test pattern? Suppose, I have got a test pattern, where the, this test pattern is divided into two portions. So, th this test pattern V 1, it has got a primary input part and a uh, pseudo primary input part. So, primary input part is uh, uh, say, uh, say it is some value. So, it is not specified here some 3 bit value may be there. And for the pseudo primary input suppose the desired setting is 1 1 0. So, what is done? First this uh, shift enable is made high, shift enable is uh, made high and the clock is applied. So, these are the 3 shift cycles. So, first we in, in the serial input we have put a 0. So, that after the first clock cycle the uh, uh, flip flops uh, 1 gets the bit 0. Then at the next cycle at the serial input we put 1 and this 0 of the first flip flop shifts to the second flip flop and in the third cycle this 0 comes to the flip flop 3, this 1 that we had introduced comes to uh, flip flop 2 and in flip flop 1 this 1 is introduced. So, this actually uh, um, now I have got this uh, pseudo primary input uh, bits having the proper values. Then this uh, shift enable is disabled, uh, shift enable line AC is disabled and there is a hold cycle that is given that is uh, that utility we will see later for the time being we just ignore it. There is a hold cycle after that uh, this uh, a clock another clock pulse is given. So, this is called capture, because at this time uh, this value is held at the input and this. Uh, so, this combinational logic it will evaluate uh, uh, this uh, input, this uh, uh, V 1 the primary input part it can be set to proper values at any time up to this part up to this uh, point up to this uh, shifting point at any time. So, for the sake of simplicity we can assume that the V 1 is set at the beginning of the uh, shifting itself. So, now after that uh, the, so this capture cycle so one pulse a clock pulse is given in the capture cycle in the hold cycle the uh, circuit value the combinational logic it evaluates uh, this input pattern and sets the primary output and uh, prime pseudo primary outputs to proper values then in the capture cycle the pattern that we have so that is actually captured onto the uh, uh, flip flop so that is uh, in the capture cycle in the capture cycle from this combinational logic output the bits uh, the pattern they, they get captured onto these uh, 3 scan flip flops in through their data input line. Now, after that there is uh, another hold cycle given, so that uh, we can uh, see the pr pr primary pr pseudo primary output the first bit of the pseudo primary output we can see that it is this L. So, this is actually checked then for the next pattern we start shifting say next pattern is V 2 and V 2 for V 2 uh, there is a primary input setting. So, that is not our concern say for uh, it the pseudo primary bit is uh, bit should be 1 0 1. So, this one is shifted at the first clock cycle. So, as a result this L that we had at uh, flip flop 1. So, that get shifted to the second scan cell and this H of the second scan cell comes to the third scan cell as a result we can view this uh, second scan output ok. This is f f 2 output of previous uh, corresponding to previous pattern is now observable. Now, in the next another shift pulse uh, another clock pulse is given with shift enable remaining high. So, now this uh, one comes to the second scan cell and then new 0 pattern that we have applied at, at the serial input. So, that uh, comes into the first flip flop and this uh, L goes to the third flip flop. So, we can see the third flip flop. So, after this uh, clock we have got all the 3 uh, bits of this uh, pseudo primary output shifted out and we could see the values. Now, this uh, pattern has got the loaded this uh, this uh, pseudo primary input part of V 2 has got loaded. So, again one hold cycle is given and then a capture pulse is given in the hold cycle the combinational logic will evaluate uh, the value and then in the capture cycle the values that are computed at uh, prior pseudo primary output. So, they will get captured onto the uh, um, uh, flip flops and again in the next uh, pattern V 3 the, the current response L L H will be shifted out through the scan out line 
and the next uh, the, the next uh, pseudo primary input part will get shifted into the flip flops. So, that way this uh, testing operation will take place. So, we can find out that this circuit now operates in several mode like in circuit operation type normal and the scan. So, if T m the uh, test mode is uh, 0 and uh, this uh, shift enable is also 0. So, in that that is the normal operation. Now, that is a normal operation. So, the, the circuit operates in a normal mode. Now, if this uh, test mode is 1 and this shift enable is also 1. So, that is called a shift operation. Now, the pattern will be shifted through the scan chain. Now, uh, of course, the combinational logic uh, since it is a combinational logic it will do some uh, evaluations, but those evaluations are not um, uh, meaningful. We will not we are not interested in those uh, calculations. We are we will only be interested when this shifting is over and once the shifting is over. So, we give a hold cycle in the hold cycle the value uh, gets uh, the combinational logic it will evaluate uh, the values and then comes the capture cycle in the cap for the capture cycle. So, this uh, test mode is made 1 and this shift enable is made 0. As a result, the values that will be there in the pri pseudo primary output will get captured onto the flip flop. So, that way this uh, capture operation. So, we have got 3 modes of operation in this uh, full scan design one is normal mode, one is uh, shift mode, and another is capture mode. So, they are identified by this setting of this TM and test mode and uh, uh, shift enable lines. Then comes this clocked scan uh, full scan design. So, in a clocked uh, full scan design, so we have got two clocks as we said that there is a data clock and there is a scan clock. So, DCK and SCK. So, for the normal operation of the system, this DCK line will be the clocks will be given to DCK and uh, SCK will become will remain permanently low and for the scan part or uh, so this SCK line will be giving pulse, they will be given pulse and this uh, DCK part will be DCK clock will be deactive. So, in a masked full scan design full scan circuit a scan enable signal AC is used. So, this is the um, so here we do not have any AC signal. So, that was there in the clock full scan design in, in, in a masked full, uh, full scan design in clock full scan design we have got two uh, clocks DCK and SCK two independent clocks for shift mode and capture mode of operation. So, operation is now very simple like whenever we want to uh, do the shifting part, shifting part of the pattern. So, this SCK pulses will be given and the values will be given onto this SI. So, that the values are loaded onto this flip flops and then we give the DCK clock. So, that this uh, data that is there in, in uh, so the this uh, they, they will be so combinational logic will evaluate. Uh, this q values and this p i values okay that is the p p i values and p i values and the accordingly the proper values will come in y or this y 1 y 2 and this p p o bits and then uh, when this d c k clock will be given. So, this uh, from this p p o lines the values will be coming into this flip flops to this d i line the data input lines and then after again that again that that shift clock will be given and when the shift clock is given. So, these values will get shifted to the next place. So, when the at the SO output. So, we can serially see the output while the shifting in of next pattern will be going on parallelly. So, otherwise it is same, but only thing is that instead of a separate scan enable line. So, we have got a separate clock line SCK. Next we will look into this LSSD full scan design. In LSSD design, so we have got uh, the output uh, of uh, output port plus LO 1 of the master latch L 1 is used to drive the combinational logic of the design. So, in this so in this case, so this L 1 plus is used for driving the combinational logic. So, in this case the slave latch L 2 is used only for scan testing. So, basically in, uh, 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 this in case of LSSD design. So, we had uh, two version one is the um, uh, latched version and another is that uh, we have uh, the uh, one part is that uh, this, this latch is uh, driving the combinational logic and the second part is that for the shifting. So, we need we need double latch. So, that is actually done by this L 2. So, this uh, L 1. So, this combinational logic produces some output that is latched here and this latch or uh, this latched output is uh, going to combinational logic 2 as input. So, that is uh, that is the basic circuit design that we have. Now, 
to uh, handle this uh, scan shifting part. So, this scanning line is coming and this uh, this L 2 plus line is driving the input of the next one uh, input of the next uh, latch. Okay. So, similarly, this L 2 plus line. So, they this drives the next latch. So, this way this uh, SI line and L 2 plus line. So, they they will cons construct the scan chain okay. and this part. So, uh, so, this L 1 plus line. So, they are used for driving the circuit. So, this L 1 plus line drives this circuit and this L 1 plus line drives this circuit. So, this is from the design of the circuit. So, we do not have anything uh, uh, anything to design at this point, because uh, that was the uh, that was the way the circuit was designed. So, it had two part logic 1 and logic 2 and uh, these flip flops ok. So, this latches were there, where this L 1 plus L 1 plus and L 1 plus. So, they were driving uh, different part uh, the two different combinational logic portions. So, if we are uh, having a double latch design, so double latch design uh, here uh, the um, combinational logic that we have. So, they are L 1 plus lines are not used, but L 2 plus lines have been used in the original design. So, in this case we have got this L 2 plus lines feeding this combinational logic and at the same time this L 2 plus logic also forming the scan chain. So, there is no problem, because now this L 1 plus lines were are not required. So, in the previous case L 1 plus lines were required for uh, uh, driving the combinational part, but here it is not required. So, in normal mode of operation C 1 and C 2 clocks are used in a non overlapping fashion. So, C 1 and C 2 clocks are used in non overlapping fashion, so that the data that is coming to the first latch is shifted to the second latch and then it is available at the uh, then it is available at the uh, uh, for operation in the combinational logic. So, during shift operation we will be using clocks A and B in a non overlapping manner. Uh, the scan cells S R L 1 to S R L 3 they will form a single scan chain from S i to S o. So, for this uh, C 1 and C 2, so they are used in uh, for uh, um, normal operation in a non overlapping fashion and this uh, A and B. So, they are used in non overlapping fashion for scan shifting. And similarly, during capture operation, this C 1 and C 2 they will be applied to the load the test response from the combinational logic. So, uh, that way they are remaining same. So, double latch design. So, if your uh, if your system requires a double latch design, then you have to do it like that. If the design require uh, design itself is a single latch design, then we have to use the previous mechanism. So, in both way we can have this uh, latch base for latch based design. So, we can frame scan chains like this. There are several uh, rules for this LSSD designs like all storage elements must be polarity hold latches. So, this is one requirement. So, you cannot keep any uh, uh, storage element as normal latch, because then this scan chain cannot be uh, framed. The latches are controlled by two or more non overlapping clocks, this C 1, C 2, A, B like that. A set of clock primary inputs must follow three conditions. Okay, so, the, the, the if you uh, any 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 set of uh, uh, clocks you take that they must be uh, they must follow this condition. The all clock inputs to SRL must be inactive when clock primary inputs are inactive. So, so this sh there should not be any other clock coming to the flip flop or coming to the latches. Okay. So, only the pri primary clocks that we have. So, they should drive this uh, clock inputs of SRLs. The clock input to any SRL must be controlled from one or more clock primary inputs. So, there should so again the thing is that it uh, every clock input of an SRL has to be controlled by some primary input. And second thing is that no clock can be ended with another clock or its complement. So, if you end then there is a problem because the, uh, the operation becomes difficult to predict like when this clock signal how to enable it, how to disable it. So, that logic becomes complex. Many times what happens is for the um, uh, for uh, designing purpose. So, we do we put some logic on the clock line. So, do some ending of clock signals. So, that when both the signals are active then only this will be active like that, but it should not be done here and ended particularly has to be avoided because ending means there is they are uh, they are overlapping clocks. So, it will be active only it, it will be active only when both the clocks are active. So, if you are taking a uh, 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 if you do an ending that means that line output is uh, going to be an ended operation. 
so that will there will they, that will be active only during overlapping clock so we don't want any action uh, we, we don't want the clocks to be overlapped because in that case the operation becomes unpredictable then clock primary inputs must not feed the data inputs to srls either directly or through combinatorial logic so this clock primary inputs it should not be connected to the di input for the same reason that in that case the data input will uh, will also change when the clock input is changing so in clock input is changing if data input changes then of course uh, um, uh, there will be a, there may be a setup hold timing problem or if it is via through combinational logic ending with say some logic operation around clock and then applied to the uh, combination then applied to the srl data input then also the same problem that during the clock is change during the um, when the clock is active the data input may flicker so as a result the operation may be problematic each system latch must be part of an srl and each srl must be part of some scan chain so it says that there there should not be in any latch left as it is okay so that is that is one part and uh, also each srl each latch must be part of this, they must be put into some scan chain so no latch remains uncontrolled so that is the whole thing the no latch remains uncontrolled a scan state exists under certain condition each srl or scan out so is a function of only the preceding srl or scan input si in its scan chain during the scan operation so this is the first condition that in any for any scan cell it is not uh, its content in the next clock cycle it is dependent on the content of previous scan cell only so it is or from the uh, scan primary input so it is only on only on those two parts the scan out of a uh, scan out will depend so it is not that it depends on some other logic and all that so the scan chain is actually from one chain to another chain the connection is a straight connect one, one flip flop to another flip flop on a chain uh, or sorry one latch to another latch on a chain so they uh, that's a straight away connection so there is no logic in between so it is not a function of something else and all clocks except the shift clocks are disabled at the srl clock inputs so this is also necessary because uh, when we are shifting so all other clocks must be disabled only the shift clock should be applied so next the partial scan design so in partial scan design uh, what we do is that we will be uh, considering only a subset of uh, latches or flip flops for putting on to uh, um, the into this uh, scan chain. So, the problem with full scan design is that we cannot, uh, it may not be possible to put all the flip flops or latches onto a chain. So, partial scan design will uh, try to resolve this issue and try to come up with solutions so that we have uh, less complexity. We have um, uh, many of the design, all the design criteria, all design criteria are met in terms of timing, in terms of uh, power, in terms of uh, area, and all that. So, we will continue in the next lecture.